Uh, morning, everybody. Um, welcome to the start of another week. At least we have a full week this week. Um, well, quite a lot to talk about, as I'm sure you're probably all aware. Um, difficult markets, actually, when we get um, these sort of gap moves that we've seen. Um, morning, Jeffrey. Hi, everybody. Um, hello, hello. Um, I'm just going to put up a little uh, board watch here that some of you who you've, who've been listening to me over the last few weeks know we use just to see what's going on in the, a number of markets. Um, we've got multiple uh, markets, currencies along the top, euro. In fact, they're all currencies. In fact, this has been changed around a bit. Let me see if I can find my other one. Okay, that's probably a little bit better. Okay, um, it sort of sums it up, this. Um, hello, David. Hi. Um, well, risk on again, or for, pe for people who are a little less familiar with that term, um, it's time for the markets to recover a little bit. Equities uh, back up. Certainly last week we had, uh, despite Friday's moves, which are a little bit disappointing, I think the FTSE ended up about 175 up on the, de uh, up on the week. The Dow had a very good week, uh, over 400 odd points, 435 points, I seem to recall. Um, so, yeah, you know, the typical sort of reaction that you'd uh, expect to see the, uh, uh, as, as, I guess, you could say it's a little bit of a short covering, maybe, risk on whatever terms you want to use. Uh, but uh, equities up, bonds down, commodities mixed, um, um, you know, and the dollar down. And you can see it in these charts that we're looking at here. If I can just quickly make sure that this is all refreshed properly. Um, here we've got um, top left, we have gold. Top middle, we have dollar euro. Top right, we have copper. Uh, we have the S&Ps on the bottom left. That's the Standard & Poor's 500, uh, the main U.S. indices. Uh, then in the middle bottom is uh, U.S. Treasuries, and in the middle uh, and the bottom right is the FTSE. So you can see FTSE recovery got a nice move this morning. We were due 100 higher. Not, ex not, not surprised to see that at all. Um, e even if I change this to... Uh, you know, buns or gilts, you'd also see bond markets are pulling back a little bit. So the longer term time frames are starting to sort of uh, turn over, as you can see. The uh, dollar euro or euro dollar was definitely uh, confirmed it on Friday, having had a long, long run down. So for the time being, I think, what we, you know, we, we probably have to go with it um, as much as uh, we've got doubts over what it all means. Um, it's always tough when we have these gaps in the market, as Adrian's been discussing with you. You know, if I look back at the 15 minute here, just looking at uh, dollar euro, these big gaps that we're talking about here, there is a sort of a propensity for them to get filled. Um, and I would uh, exercise caution uh, whilst there is this gap. And I'd also like to see exactly what the US is going to uh, say about uh, events over the weekend. And we all know what those events um, were or are um, Spain, the Spanish banking bailout, as it's called. The Spanish or the Spanish government are very keen to make sure that we don't call it a bailout, but it is a bailout. Um, they have been very sensitive to the fact that they don't need money as a government, um, and there is a there is a distinct difference between the Greek uh, crisis and the Spanish banking crisis. Greece ran out of money as a government. They spent far too much, whether it be on the uh, Olympics or uh, infrastructure product, pr uh, projects, but they've spent an inordinate amount of cash and they've basically run out uh, and they've been punished. In Spain, it's different. Um, it's more of a private sector issue where the banks have binged on credit, lent to God knows every uh, property developer along the Costa del Sol and uh, Costa Blanca, Valencia, all that sort of stuff. And there's huge debts that have been built up. Um, and as a result, uh, a lot of these banks have got serious capital issues, uh, which has really come down to the fact that it's too large, too big a chunk for the Spanish government 
especially with current bond yields uh, or perception of uh, risks in investing in Spanish bonds. So the Spanish government felt it was unable or unwilling to be able to uh, recapitalize its banks. So it's got this sort of special arrangement with the ESFS, the Rescue Fund, uh, and the new Rescue Fund, the European Stability Mechanism, the ESM, uh, that is coming into being this month. Uh, and they've got funding up to 100 billion. If the Spanish had enough money, they could sort it out themselves. Help sounds like a bailout to me. Stuart, you're quite right. Yeah, I mean, I don't agree with Rajoy, but, uh, uh, you know, the Spanish company is a little bit sensitive, really. But I will explain further. But uh, quite right, Stuart. Um, so this money is going to... In fact, let's just put up some headlines. Let's move on from these charts here and just open up a... Okay, so Eurozone buys itself time. Uh, and I think, really, that's partly really what's going on. What, what, what's actually happened is this 100 billion has been made available by this ESFS or the ESM um, to FROB, which is uh, a special fund that was set up by the uh, Spanish government some time ago. Um, I think it sounds probably pretty good in Spanish, but when you translate it, it, uh, it uh, translates as the Fund for Orderly Bank Restructuring. Um, doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, but anyway, um, it's positive. Um, let's make no bounds, bones about it. Um, it's viewed by investors as positive. Uh, at least it shows there's a sign that the Eurozone is actually tackling some of its problems. Um, and the reaction, as I say, has, has, has definitely been positive. You, we can see this morning um, equities uh, sharply higher. Uh, in fact, the FTSE is yeah, just giving up a little bit of ground now. Um, as, and as you all know, having um, had their first run through with Adrian, there's been a significant move in the dollar, although the, the dollar is p pulling back a little bit at the moment. So, uh, as I say, that gap is always a risk. Um, and we've got quite a bit of a gap to fill. So 126.05 on the mo at the moment on, dollar, on euro dollar. Um, but it is regarded as positive. So you've seen the sort of typical reaction, euro up, equities up, dollar down and bonds down. Commodities will probably uh, recover. Um, that's the dollar-based ones, excluding the likes of the gold, which is a slightly more complex animal. But I'd expect to see crude, copper, aluminium, all the base metals rally. Um, but it's not the end of the story, as I'm sure you're all aware. Um, this is uh, a solution of sorts. But I think the key point here, and the reason why I've got this page up from the Financial Times, is that um, they've made a very good point. This paragraph here is absolutely key. What they're saying is that the dysfunction of the euro is not addressed. Um, what the FT is arguing is that they need to sever this, what they call this lethal embrace between stressed sovereign debt and weak banking, banking systems. And, and the FT is suggesting that the cash advance to bail out banks with tax fair funds add, adds to the burden of Madrid's public finances. Basically, what it's saying is that although these, this money is going into FROB, it's still a government agency. It is still registered as government debt. If the banks can't pay it back, It'll be the Spanish government that pays it back. So it hasn't really, in the long term, it won't necessarily improve investor confidence. What it has done, it's stabilized the position, the Spanish banking position. Um, and so that is very, very important. The one issue that hasn't really been discussed, and it's something that um, we should all be aware of, the European stability mechanism depends on, you know, it, on having its money back. Uh, that's the conditions on which it's lent. Um, the fact that uh, Spain has managed to get these funds on favourable rates is partly down to the fact that Angela Merkel, uh, Chancellor of Germany, actually agrees with what Spain's done in terms of its austerity measures uh, as opposed to what's happened in Greece. So that's why I think this has been facilitated in this way. Um, having said that, though, these funds have to be repaid before any other bondholders are repaid. So in a way, what this does, it subordinates existing bondholders of Spanish debt to the ESM. So it's something that could cause problems, perhaps, but um, we can only wait to see. Um, okay, other than that, um, which is the big, big news, obviously, and will be discussed um, certainly throughout the first couple of days this week. Um, I would be inclined to just wait and see how the U.S. reacts as well because uh, they may have uh, quite a bit to say about what's happening there. Um, the other bit of news that's um, happening at the end of this week that is still in train, 
the Greek elections. That's on the 17th. That's this, what is it, Saturday? No, Sunday. So the, uh, next Sunday coming. Um, and obviously, you know, the Spanish issue, unfortunately, is not necessarily uh, going to be resolved because one part of the problem with the Spanish banking uh, um, bailout, as we're calling it now, Stuart, um, is the fact that we still don't know the extent of the uh, losses, loan losses on these um, Spanish savings and loans banks. Um, and that audit that's taking place, the results of that won't be known until the end of the month. So that'll be hanging over the market, number one. Number two, we've got the Greek elections, as I say. Um, whatever happens there, my suspicions are that uh, there will be negotiations after this coming Sunday on, diff on various coalition possibilities. And even this party, uh, Syriza, uh, who is opposed to all the austerity, could end up... Uh, um, having to negotiate on a coalition uh, arrangement, which actually could uh, compromise its position on austerity, perhaps. We don't know. Uh, but I still think that uh, there is a high risk still that Greece uh, could be forced out of the euro, but uh, we could have uh, a little bit of a storm brewing sometime next week as, the, as uh, that uh, issue comes to the fore again. Okay, that's really a summary of really what's going on at the moment.